Pam Dubois, Dream Real Estate TV. Today, I am super, super excited. Grateful, as always, as you guys know, to have with me special guest, Mark Itell, Mr. Mortgage, Mr. <laughs> Mortgage himself. And he's coming to us from West Palm Beach, Florida, right? That's right. I'm in uh, Palm Beach County. Okay, awesome. Nice. One of the nicest parts of the world. I love Palm Beach County. I love West Palm Beach. I Got some great memories there in, in the little area right there, the ocean. But um, first, Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Sure. And speaking of West Palm, I've tried to leave many times. I was born and raised here, but I always end up coming home. It's uh, every time I experience a winter somewhere else, I just tuck my tail between my legs and head south because growing up in shorts and flip flops with golf clubs in one hand and a surfboard in the other, oh, that's it's really great. hard to pass up that lifestyle, but um, that's the yes, best. Yeah, it's great. Um, but to just tell you a little about me, I, uh, as I mentioned, born and raised here, I um, grew up in a construction family. So real estate was always kind of in my blood as a byproduct of that. Uh, my grandparents owned a custom home building company and they did uh, some small development but I always was fascinated by the construction side of it, but I really loved the handover, seeing that family, the joy, the excitement yeah. that they received when they were moving in that new house. And it was, I don't know, it was kind of always in the back of my mind. Um, I ran a manufacturing company for a little while um, just after school and then fell back into real estate and mortgages in particular in the late nineties and have been involved one way or another um, ever since. So truly have been blessed by the industry. I've met a lot of cool people. Clients have become friends, friends have become clients, and it's just been, you know, a wonderful experience. And it continues. I'm a fan of yours. So uh, I was jumping at the opportunity when you uh, invited me on. So I just, it's a great journey and uh, I'm blessed to be on it. So. Oh, thank you so much. It's so nice. And I'm so grateful to have you on here sharing. Sometimes it's a small world because we got to talk about West Palm Beach and yeah. Park and all that actually in Florida, which is just, it's amazing in itself, right? So let's talk a little bit about, um, do you want to talk about the interest rates? Yeah, if you want to. I mean, yeah. um, so it's interesting, right? Um, yeah. Interest rates were artificially low during COVID because yeah. of the both administra administrations, the prior administration with Trump and his team, and then the Biden team now kind of keeping that um, the relief money flowing. And right. what the Federal Reserve did was they bought a bunch of mortgage backed securities and they artificially reduced interest rates by increasing the monetary supply. So we had this amazing environment once in probably multiple lifetimes opportunity yeah. to borrow money at, you know, we were seeing 15 year rates in the ones, um, 30 year rates in the twos. It was just crazy. Wow. And we became used to that. So yeah. since the, we're recording this in the summer of 2022, and at the beginning of the year, we were still in the threes and everybody was complacent with that 3% interest rate environment, thinking this is the new norm. And we quickly accelerated into, you know, depending on the program, solidly in the fives, but some touching the sixes. And everybody was shell-shocked. Like, oh my God, rates have doubled, which is true. Yeah. But if you look at the historical numbers, you know, a 5% interest rate for 30 years versus a, you know, a historical appreciation rate or yeah. a historical inflation rate is still cheap money. Yeah. So yeah. one thing we've seen in the last week of June and as we're now entering July, the rates have stabilized a little bit. We had another quick run up at the beginning of June. And we're, you know, we're quoting rates right around 5% to five and a half right now um, this week. And I think people have exhaled and they realize, okay, I can still make this work. Um, yeah. We are seeing a little shift in the market, right? Some more yeah. inventories coming to the market. Um, I did a um, talk about inventory actually this morning uh, before we, before we jumped on the zoom and there's 1% more inventory has come to market, but 16% less um, pending sales, which basically means there's more product available. Yeah. So we're seeing buyers kind of thinking about the offer for another few days instead of making it Saturday, 
So it's in by Sunday, highest and best reviewed by Monday. Right. I think we're seeing that slow. We're, we're seeing a bit more inventory and the interest rates have stabilized. Now, we don't know what the Federal Reserve's move coming up is going to do to mortgage rates. Usually, although they're not directly um, correlated, they do kind of move together as the economy does generally. Um, but I personally think a lot of that's already baked into the cake. And yeah. I kind of feel like, you know, we're going to live in the five to 6% range for a while. Um, recessionary pressure on the Fed may mm -hmm. loosen monetary policy and allow that to pull back a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of a long, a long technical answer to rates, yeah. but I, I feel like where we are isn't scary. It's how yeah. fast we've gotten here that scared a lot of people. Um, right. Yeah. They say speed, well, I don't know, speed doesn't kill, but acceleration does or something like that. And that's kind of, we raced up to this 6% interest rate so quickly. Everybody just said, wait a minute. Yeah. Now yeah. It's back, back down a little. It was a little panic mode. And uh, yeah, no, in reality, even 6% is really not a bad rate. No, I mean, my bald spot may, may age me, but I mean, and I hate when old people say this, but I paid 10% uh, and I bought my rate down on the first property I ever purchased. Mm -hmm. And the uh, appreciation uh, cycle that we were in was 3%. Yeah. Now, a 10% interest rate and a 3% appreciation cycle is almost reverse of where we were in January. Right. But I still profited from that, that decision. You know, cool. I went, it was interesting. My brother came home from the Air Force and I bought a house the same month he came home and he rented, well, you know, the West Palm Beach area. He rented a very cool condo on the golf course over by the old Palm Beach Mall. He was overlooking the pool in the golf course and every weekend looked like Melrose Place back by that pool. Wow. Beautiful people, bikinis, barbecues. And I bought this little beat up house in Palm Springs and fixed it up. Now, the first year, our payments were almost the same. Mm -hmm. I was paying 561 65 I'll never forget that number. He was paying 550 After eight years, his rent was over $900. I was still paying 561 65 I sold that house, took the equity, and yes. bought a house and a boat in North Palm Beach. Nice. So it's, it's really getting your mind away from the, the, the headlines. As we were talking before we jumped on the Zoom, the headlines can scare you into believing whatever they want you to believe. They're just right. getting your attention. Right. But if you look at that as an example and say, okay, that could be classed as worst case scenario, right? 10% yeah. rate, low single digit appreciation. Yes. It still makes sense. So I share those stories, um, not as a personal brag, but to encourage the people that are on the sidelines saying, right. Wait a minute. Right. I'm scared yeah. right now. Yeah. Because it's scary compared to yesterday. But yesterday compared to history was an anomaly. So we shouldn't really, right. I don't right. know. I could go on about this all yeah. day. No, and I totally agree with you because when I talk about interest rate, we bought our first house in 1986. Okay. And our rate was 12.5%. Right. That's what we paid back then. And that was, you know, that was good because when you talk to my exes, his parents, they were paying like even higher, like 17%, you know, or something. Well, I, love, like that. Yeah. I love that you share that because so, um, and we can talk about the radio show in a minute, but around the radio show, I do a lot of this research. I guess I'll throw it out there. I host a radio show on iHeart about mortgage and real estate. So because of that, I always dig deep into the historical data. Mm -hmm. And we looked back to, you know, the eighties where rates were 16, 17, they touched 18 for a minute and then pulled back down in the 16s. And we looked at what would have happened if you bought a house right then, that worst case scenario. Yeah. You're still profiting. It still was a wise decision. And yeah. then I went back and consulted with a client that I had from 2005. And they bought here in Palm Beach Gardens at the mm -hmm. pinnacle of their neighborhood, the summer of 2005. They paid 385000 for a townhouse. Then the market crashed. And it, the neighbor's house went into foreclosure during the crash and sold for 180. And they were, I'll, I'll never forget the phone call. They were panicking. We lost $200,000. Well, did you, or did that's, it's on paper. The good news is they loved their neighborhood. So they stayed there and they kept making the payment. And 17 years later, they've got it paid off and it's worth 525. 
Right. So they have over a half a million dollars in equity in a house that they um, own free and clear. Yeah. And their mortgage payment was never more than rent would have been in one of the, the surrounding uh, neighborhoods. Yeah. Was that a bad decision or was it uncomfortable during that crash cycle to know you could have bought the house for $200,000 less? So my, I guess I just share that in, it's all the, the lens that we look at things through. And if, if you want to flip and make short term gains, maybe the stock market is a better place, but the, the reality is we all need a house. Yeah. We're all going yeah. home to somewhere and you know, really there's no choice. You're going to pay a mortgage, right? It's just, right. are you going to pay yours or are you going to pay your landlord? Somebody else's, right? So yeah. it's, it's really what, so obviously you can tell I'm passionate about real estate because I see the opportunity that it affords people. Yeah. Um, that's really what it is for me. I like to see, you know, the 25 year old um, person who's just getting started, who, you know, maybe they don't hold out for that three bedroom, two bath with a pool and they go get the two, two townhouse. Yeah. They suck it up for a couple of years, but then they've got 50,000 in equity or 30,000 in equity that gets them that next step that never cost them anything. They didn't right. skip a Starbucks. They didn't skip a vacation. They didn't Dave Ramsey their way to that 30 or 50 grand. The house right. did it for them. Right. And I guess now being at this age, having looked back, I, I'm like, man, if I could do it over again, I would have bought everything I could get a hold of in all yeah. markets because over yeah. time it makes sense. Yeah. And I think we're coming into a market that we're actually going to see those, those deals all over again. Real yep. estate is always a great investment. You just got to know when to hold on to it, when to sell it. You know, it is a home, like you're saying. So you're going to live there unless you're buying it to flip it or in, for investment purposes. But yep. hold on to it. And don't sell it at the wrong time. Don't sell it when the market has just gone down 200,000, right? right? Like you were saying, just hold on to it. Now they, they have a mortgage that's free and clear and all that money is theirs. So, and we I didn't mean to interrupt you, but we talked about it then because they yeah. called me and they're like, what do we do? You know, back then people were doing strategic defaults to try to yeah. get mortgage modifications. And they both had great jobs and exceptional credit. So that was out of the question. But I said, if you really hate it, mm -hmm. you can rent it because the payment that they were paying, mm -hmm. the rent would have uh, provided positive cash flow. Right. And they said, well, we really like it here. And I said, okay, let's just walk this back. Yeah. You like it. You can afford it. There's not anywhere else you'd rather be. So maybe you just stay and ride it out. And right. it, it, over time, it always makes sense. I love that you say you said that because- what was that Kenny Rogers song? It made me bounce in my mind when you said, know when to hold it. Oh, know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Right. Yeah. Right. In real estate, if you've got that cash flow generated from renting it and you're not on an adjustable rate mortgage and those things that, you know, you suffer payment shock, you're able to manage, manage it as a rental. You're not forced to sell it. You right. can keep it and right. rent it and let the market re recover. But anyway. Right. So I want to uh, actually two things I wanted to say to you. Um, I mean, it is in cycles, right? They normally say real estate's in cycles, like a seven to 10 year cycle. So it goes up and then it comes back down. It's, and, and historically, it's been that way. So if people actually check and see, it always is like a seven year, seven to 10 year cycle where it goes up and comes back down. But, um, you know, it's it, it's always a great investment. Definitely always. I love real estate. I love everything about real estate. You know, I've been in the real estate field myself for over 35 years. And so in all facets of real estate. So it, it's my it's my heart. It's my, you know, where I am. Right. I just finished a real estate course for new agents, um, 16 videos, um, modules that I did because I actually think that real estate agents also, like you, you were talking, um, you're on this clubhouse room this morning, brand new agents, they get in the business and they learn about ethics. They learn about the law, but they don't learn about how to keep a buyer lawyer law. What questions do I need to ask a seller at a, a listing right. presentation? You know, what documents do I need to tell my buyer that they need for you as a mortgage person, right? right. They need to know all these things. Right, and right. Teaches them these things. So that's why I developed the course to go through all of that information. And I'm really super excited to get that launched. 
But I wanted to go back to you for your example really quick because we're taking up time and I don't want to take up too much more of your time. But I wanted to hear your story about the person that called you that saw you online, you know. Oh, recently. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love that. So uh, just for the record, that's why I'm such a fan of what you're doing, whether it's teaching the courses or just encouraging agents to get on the video with you and giving them that motivation to go out and do it on their own because yeah. for a lot of us this is foreign right we don't like how we look we don't yeah. like how we sound but the reality is guys most of you look and sound better than me so if I can do it you can do it so um, Pam and I were talking before we jumped on and hit record um, I was challenged to do a YouTube video challenge as part of the real estate all day club which we both frequent and I did, you know, I'm a lender, I'm not an agent, so I didn't have the same subject matter, you know, new open house, just listed, sold yeah. for over ask. I don't get, I don't have those default videos to produce. So I just started doing what we just did, talking about the market. And then I like to ride motorcycles. I play the drums in a rock band. So we did some videos around that, you know, what is what do I do on Fridays? But anyway, yeah. not to not to go down the the rabbit path with that, but in being challenged to do that, I got way outside of my comfort zone. And we were challenged to post these videos. And a friend and former business associate from about 20 years back in my past saw one of the videos and really liked my delivery and my insight around the market. And yeah. it wasn't shock and politics. It was just data-driven decisions is, is kind of my, my, my thing. And he contacted me out of the blue and was working on a real estate and mortgage radio show for iHeartRadio. Yeah. And the conversation started with him inviting me to co-host it. And after some uh, meetings and we were working on the concept and we were kind of theming out how we were going to do this, he just took his hands off the wheel and said, you do it. You <laughs> run with it. It's your show. You write the shows. It's your topic. And I, did, I was scared to death. I'm not going to yeah. lie to you. I was so frightened and I just went for it. You mentioned, as we were talking earlier, you just got stretched outside of your comfort zone and, and we, not to get airy fairy, but we were talking about how we all have different um, variations of ourselves and it's up to us to choose which one that we want to be. Right. And hopefully we choose the best one. So I just said, okay, I can do this. And now we're into our seventh or eighth month. And we're in negotiation to syndicate with other um, radio stations. And it's all, it's mine. It's the Mr. Mortgage Show. It's on iHeartRadio once a week. There's a podcast um, page. I'm doing daily podcasts around a single topic every day. And it's it's getting me reach. And yeah. now I'm getting phone calls. I'm licensed in other states. And there's syndicators saying, hey, we could put you on this station in Virginia this station in South Carolina. So I don't know what's going to happen. I've kind of, Fighting. I've taken my hands off the wheel and let, you know, God and spirit and creator right. and whoever you believe in, that's who's driving the car for me at this point. Yeah. And I'm just going out there and, and giving it my best and trying to give people the information they need to make better decisions for them yeah. and their that's families exciting. around real estate and finance. So yeah. Super cool. <laughs> That's super cool. It looks like you're ready to take off and you go <laughs> <laughs> way beyond. That's awesome when you step out of that comfort zone, right? But as you yeah. know, going back and talking about videos, I can still look at my videos and I still do. And I, I, am, I can be so critical of my videos. I look at it. I don't like my voice. I don't like what this. Uh, it's like somebody told me, it's like, just do it. Do it messy. Do it yeah. now and just get it out there and don't look at it. Well, what's the first thing I said to you when we jumped on? I'm like, man, you look and sound fantastic because I'm lo I'm looking at it with a completely different non-judgmental lens. And you're thinking, and I know me, I look at my forehead and think, man, 10 years ago, I had a lot more hair. And 20 years ago, I had six pack abs. Thank God the camera stops here. <laughs> but it's funny. Nobody looks at us the way we look at ourselves. ourselves. And yeah. A friend of mine, Steve Kyles, shares this all the time. He said, anything worth doing is worth doing badly. Just mm -hmm. get started because okay. you can get better. But if you never get started, yeah. you're never going to have the chance to improve. And 
I don't know. That's why I love what you're doing. I love this format. I love the fact that you're taking new agents, seasoned agents, people outside of the industry, people who just have a super po- uh, positive mes- message to share. Yeah. Because this is a hard business. You know, it's mm-hmm. difficult to go out there and get beat up every day by the general public and not get a paycheck at the end of the day. So having those other motivational elements that you're bringing into what you're doing is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I am actually, and I have a heart for agents. I really do because I've been an agent and I know it's like, it's hard. It's really hard because they have to wear so many hats and they spend so much money trying to market themselves. And if they would just get out and do these videos and get themselves out there, look, look what you landed you know, by doing oh, something out there crazy. on YouTube. Yeah, it's crazy. amazing. I talked to another gentleman a couple of days ago, a realtor in Texas. He got a commercial deal from one of his uh, videos. And it, he, he said to him, it, it was like he, he messed up, even messed up in the in, uh, in actually doing it. Right. And he was like, and he got a commercial deal out of it. And I was like, you guys, you just got to come out here and do it and just don't worry about it. Do it messy. It's absolutely. okay to be messy. It's okay to be messy. No, but, I yeah. absolutely love that. Yeah. I mean, sometimes on the radio station, I get our call in phone number wrong because I have all these numbers in my head all day, every day. And I rattle off the anytime hotline. And, and then I, I always have a tendency to superimpose the uh the numbers and i just said you know what i'm human okay guys i don't know if you're going to get the the pizza restaurant when you call that other number but if you want to talk to us on the air this is the real number you need so yeah it's that's fun it really at the end of the day we have to learn to laugh at ourselves right that's the bottom line in all of it you absolutely know? absolutely and i think honestly um you you touched on something that i just wanted to elaborate on the biggest part of what i do my practice like the sh- the radio show's fun but that's it's one day one hour a week and i there's some prep time involved so my commitment of time is more than that but what the public sees is one hour one day yeah but the biggest part of what i do is agent support because yeah. my number one source of clients is re- realtor referrals it always has been yeah. And um, because of that, we built systems to help our agents. And you said something a m- moment ago, you have a heart for the agent because they learn the ethics and they pass their test and they get polished up and sent out into the world. And there's no one unless they get on a team where they have right. a mentor to teach them what you're teaching them. Yeah. And I've been around forever. I ran a a boutique real estate brokerage in the early 2000s. And sometimes I'll just sit with somebody at lunch and a lot of what you and I share and what we talk about in those uh, uh, clubhouse rooms are things that I'm just sharing. And hey, have you built your Google My Business page? And what's your lead follow-up strategy? And I've got VAs on staff who follow up our referred um, leads and I offer them to my agents. You're busy out there showing property and writing contracts at nine in the evening, you had four realtor.com leads come in that you haven't called yet. Yeah. Bundle them to the VA. I'll assign them to you. They'll call on your behalf and let's see if we can't help. And I'm not, that's not all we do. I'm saying those type of little things, um, those resources and those encouragements, I think make a big, big difference. I know for me, I got my license in 1999. And I went, I don't know if you remember Men's Warehouse. It was a a discount clothing store here in Florida. (laughs) So I had my little budget and I got my license and I had a little money to make it for, you know, I I figured six months before I I earned a commission. So I went and I bought this really nice suit at Men's Warehouse and I got my nice little tie and my girlfriend at the time bought me a nice little briefcase. Well, I had nothing to put in the briefcase. I had my brand new outfit on. So just like in the movies, I put a bottle of water in a banana and a sandwich in my briefcase. And I walked into this office. I didn't know what to do. The office manager said, this is, you're going to sit over here. And I'll I'll share this on another story, but I had an interesting confrontation with the gentleman that I was going to be sharing an office with. But for two or three days, I was clueless. And I would open my little briefcase and I would eat my banana and my sandwich and drink my water. And I, after the third day, I didn't know if I had made the right decision. And I went back on day four and I said, Hey, I got to learn. I don't know what to do. And the office manager said, all I can tell you is that room in the back is our guideline. 
uh, library. Back then they were still printed in three ring binders. Mm -hmm. I had no clients. I had no agent referrals and I had zero confidence. So I walked past my office and I went in the guideline library. And for the first, I don't know, three, four, five weeks, I just read. Okay, FHA, I put that one back. I pulled down the jumbo mm -hmm. and I just went through it until there was nothing else to read. And I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, okay, now it's time. <laughs> there's, there's no more excuses. You better go out there and talk to somebody. Yeah. Now, if, if I would have had these resources of 2022 yeah. and people like you in the collaborative groups that we're all a part of yeah. in 1999, you know, things might be different. I might own that house at the end of the street by the park that we were talking about earlier. 87% of realtors fail or quit within yeah. the first couple of years. It's crazy, and this isn't is it? Part NAR, yeah. They throw them out there. And I'm like, you know, I, I just really, I have such a heart for realtors because I know it's like, you know, some of them, they just work so hard, you know? And, and, and I feel like they think that, well, you know, maybe it's a, great way they watch these shows on HGTV yeah. that look easy and you know, we're going to go out and make millions of dollars and all that kind of stuff. And that's not reality in all of it. Well, HGTV is uh, like the Mick, remember the Michelob beer commercials where everybody yeah. had the flat stomach and the beautiful hair and they're drinking beer. Yeah. You've never, you've never <laughs> seen a beer drinker that looks like that. <laughs> that's what the HGTV or uh, television. Uh, that's a good point. Of. Right. Yeah. That's such a good point. Yeah. But the anyway. Course, yeah. So this course that I did 16 videos I recorded, I made it very, very simple. It's like two to three minutes each video. And do you want to hear the price for this? $197. Because I know there are new agents that need it. When you get in the business, you can't afford, like there are people charging $4,000, $5,000 oh, yeah. courses out there. You know, well, I, yeah. For, for $197, right? How many, how many of us have enrolled in a new software or a lead generation system or a new dialer? That's $197 a month. And at the end of the month, we haven't even figured out how to use it yet. If right. somebody could digest that video series in that month, they'd be off and running heads and tails above the rest of the people that they're competing against. Yeah. Actually, they need the information that you're providing some courage in this and then they're good. Yeah. Yeah. So, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I, and I'm willing to work with anybody if they're not able to afford it. I, I love giving and I love giving away free. That's what I do. It's well, like that's why you are where you are. You know, you're a great collaborator. You bring people with you down the journey. It's non-competitive. I, I don't know. I just yeah. think we get to a point in life where, and again, I sound like this weird guy who sits and meditates in, you know, the cross leg position every day, but there's that meme where the one candle lights the other candle. Mm -hmm. Now they're both yeah. burning. It didn't cost this candle its flame, but right. this candle is now burning. And I think if we run our lives and our businesses with that mentality that, yeah, I can give and you can receive. And now we both have, it didn't cost me. And now we're both better off. I just, I yeah. don't know. I find that yeah. whole philosophy fascinating. If we could all be that way, that is such a great analogy. I love that with the candle that that's, yeah, that's incredible. And yeah, not competitive, but collaborating, right. And, you know, helping each other. I and, love it. Yeah. Sharing love. Yesterday I did a collaboration room on Clubhouse and it was about collaboration. I was like, guys, go out and give people hugs, give them love, give them kisses. Yeah, right. you, know, you know, it's just, just go out and do it because everybody needs it right now. Everybody needs a love. Everybody needs a hug. And we're all running around so angry and we don't know why we're angry. Um, yeah. it, you saying that just brought a story back to mind. I did a consulting job in Taipei, Taiwan about, I don't know, 20, 20 some odd years ago, I was still in the manufacturing industry and we manufactured marina equipment. So things for commercial docks and marinas. And I went over there to teach a seminar about how to use our equipment. Mm -hmm. And we were driving and my liaison, William Wong, never forget the guy, just the, the most interesting, lovable and bizarre person I've ever met in my life. And we're driving from the airport to the hotel and it's just like in the movies, all of these little mopeds and scooters are all sneaking. We're at the stoplight and all they all come piling in and sneaking around. And it's like hundreds of them. 
and they're between all the cars and they all take off with the green light and then the cars start to go and the next traffic light, it starts to happen again. And you see there's near death experiences at every traffic light. And I said to him, William, how, how are they able to do that? And at the time we were still in Miami, there were shootings of tourists back then. So there was still that mentality Mm. of, you know, if you cut somebody off, you're going to get shot. And I said, if this was Miami, they would be shot. He said, that's the difference between you and me. He said, you're raised to assume that if they cut you off, they're trying to get one over on you. They're taking something from Mm -hmm. you. Yeah. We're taught that if they're cutting us off, they have an emergency. We let them go. They're in a problem. They're in a hurry because it's an emergency. I'm okay. I can, I can wait a second. And I just like, wow. Okay. I never thought about it like that, but we, we walk around and now, I mean, politically we're so charged. Everybody's, you know, big swollen chest and bowed up. They're mad about gas. They're mad about home prices. They're mad about interest rates. They're mad about who you voted for or who you didn't vote for. And we forget at the end of the day, we really all want the same thing. Right. You know, we just want to be healthy and happy and provide as much as we can for those we love. And that's what I, not to circle it all the way back to what we do, but that's what I love about what we do. Yeah. You know, whether it's on your side, whether you're teaching agents or you're still practicing and you negotiate that dream home mm-hmm. and I come in and structure the financing so they can build equity wealth. Yeah. We know when we walk away that that client is better served by having met us. I think if we take that attitude forward, yeah. I mean, it's, we're all better off the client and all of the professional partners that were involved in that transaction. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true because that, you know, serving and giving and, and you walk away from the closing with, with a, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, I just helped this person with one of the biggest and most important transactions of their life. Right. Yeah. You do everything you possibly can to make sure it's smooth from beginning to end. So, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I, I love real estate and uh, yeah. But I enjoyed our conversation. This is so awesome. Thank you so much for being on here. Share your information. It's just Mr. Mortgage. Yeah, so the easiest way to get me is, again, old man learning new technology. I put a link tree oh, together. You're so, not old. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to meetmarkitel.com, everything's there. The radio show, the websites, the social, it's all there. And um, you see my name on the screen, meetmarkitel.com, and you'll find everything you need for me to get in touch. And if anybody has a conversation or Pam, if you ever want to have another, I, I mean, I really enjoyed what we've done so far. So I'd welcome the opportunity to continue it on or offline. And maybe awesome. I can get you on one of my podcasts also. Oh, that would be great. That would be awesome. Yes. We could talk forward. about old times in Florida and then segue it into some, uh, meaningful yeah. professional conversation too. All right. That would be great. Thank you so much again. And you guys meet Mr. Mark. Meet Mr. Mark Mortgage or <laughs> meet, meet, meet Mr. Mortgage, right? Well, no, meet Mark Itel. Okay. Is the website where everything is. If you want to find uh, my mortgage company, just go to www.mr.mortgage. There's no .com. Just type in mr.mortgage. You don't even have to type in the www. We can't make it any easier. Right. Mr. Dot Mortgage and we'll be, we'll pop right up. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much again. Everyone, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate your time. We're grateful for you always. Stay safe, be blessed, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you.